Zebra mussels and quagga mussels and round gobies are taking over Lake Michigan. It just seems like things are out of whack. Right now, it does seem like there's major changes and we need to figure out what's happening. Invasive species have been in the Great Lakes for a while. I think the amount of change that's happened really is quite enormous. We're at Good Harbor Beach, which happens to be a site of a high avian botulism bird die-offs. And we're seeing what's turning into really a common occurrence. We can see these black gobies that maybe have died from reproduction or from botulism. How are the birds getting sick? What we think is happening this time are that quagga mussels and zebra mussels have created conditions that are really prime toxin growth areas. Mussels filter the water, they pick up this toxin, and then eventually round gobies, which we know feed on mussels, are consuming the sick invertebrates, and then they're going belly up. Then birds are eating these round gobies. To me, this botulism work is kind of like a big mystery. It's like solving a crime story. There's lots of different components. We bring in microbiologists, avian biologists, people just who understand big ecosystem pictures and trying to understand the big picture of invasive species and avian botulism outbreaks. And we can see gulls overhead now, and hopefully they won't be getting sick from this. I love walking the beach. I have spent many summers up here, and it's really disturbing when you see uh, dead birds on the beach and not really knowing what the cause is. I like to kind of be involved in this so I can understand the science and also how things have been changing with the invasive species. We hear about this big threat of them, but now we can see that probably they are linked to this botulism issue and there's this direct connection between changes in Lake Michigan and, and birds dying, and we see that right on our beautiful beaches. USGS is a partner in our Great Lakes Restoration Research Project. On these research vessels, some of the things we're doing are collecting zebra mussel samples, round goby samples, invertebrate samples from different hot spots within the park, areas we know have had high bird die-offs, and we're testing those samples from the botulism toxin gene. The biggest signifier is how many gobies, just the proportion of yeah, that's a, so that's many gobies and just so few of everything else. Some of our calculations from last year, we were, we were talking into 60% of the biomass in these specific sites were from gobies alone. We pull up minnow traps and we typically find lots and lots of gobies, some of the native sculpins too. 46. With all these fish that we find, we open up their stomach and see what they've been eating most immediately. Oftentimes that's going to be zebra mussels, one reason the botulism issue is so important, specifically at Sleeping Bear Dunes National Lakeshore, is we have uh, Great Lakes piping plovers, which is an endangered species in this area, and they nest right where we've seen a lot of these avian botulism die-offs. If we can try to understand where these botulism die-offs are originating and where they're coming from, it might impact how we manage this piping plover population. There's all these changes to Lake Michigan ecosystem, and this is a very visible one that people can see, and it's one thing we really want to address. Today we have the invasive species field course on board and these are teachers from all over the Great Lakes area and they're here learning about invasive species on board the ship. So if you guys want to work together and have maybe one group do all the, the temperature stuff, one group do all the plankton samples, something like that, and then you can... 90% of the fish that we catch are invasive species and we talk a little bit about how invasive species got here and what they've been doing. We've been sampling for over 20 years. And so we have a long-term data set where we can actually see how things have changed and what invasive species are doing to the ecosystem. They all connect together by those threads, and that's why they build on top of one another. One person can absolutely make a difference. Once you take your boat out of the water, rinsing your boat off, making sure there's no plants or anything visible on it, that is a way to keep invasive species from spreading from one body of water to another. 
and simple things you can do, especially for boaters and fishermen. There's a lot of stuff that they can do 